Ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, three days has passed very, very quickly since uh, uh, Tuesday morning, which uh, for, for those of you who have joined us all week, uh, we started off by saying our hopes, our aspirations for this week were to communicate a persuasive message, uh, to communicate very clear, compelling uh, investment propositions, and also to communicate a real sense of cohesion uh, in the way in which we were trying to drive the city forward. And uh, I, I, for one, think many of the presentations, all the presentations, in fact, uh, so far, have actually achieved that. I think this one, <laughs> this one, this one is particularly important uh, to me um, because for some of us, this has been a very long journey. Uh, John Atkins and myself have been working on this now for, for, for almost a decade, it has to be said. Um, and one of the reasons why uh, it's taken as long as it has to bring forward is, is the fact that this was one example where our collective vision and ambitions actually outstripped our capacity uh, to bring it forward. But time does become a great healer. It, we were now caught up with ourselves. Um, this is a proposition with a difference. Uh, when we were invited by the Chancellor to bring forward proposals for our enterprise zone, um, like others, we looked at this on the basis of what was going to happen because it was market-based, it was evidenced. Uh, what we wanted to do on the back of our enterprise zone is use and capture the benefits of that growth for reinvestment elsewhere in Greater Manchester. So we don't think we need an enterprise zone to make this happen. We believe the market evidence is such which will make it happen. And I'm delighted to, uh, privilege that, to welcome Charlie Cornish, the Chief Executive of Manchester Airports Group, and Felicity Goody, who on this occasion, friend to us all over many years, is here as the Chair of the University Hospital Trust for South Manchester, uh, who are gonna explain to you our emerging proposals and why we, certainly on Greater Manchester point of view, are so delighted to be associated with it. Charlie. Thank you, Howard, for that introduction. Now Howard has done my speech, I'll just show you the film straight away. Um, no, I'm delighted to be here, ladies and gentlemen. I've been with the airport group for 15 months now and clearly I've inherited the airport city concept from John Atkins and his property team, and they've been working on it, as Howard says, certainly in detail for the last three years, but, but over certainly a longer period, approaching 10 years. But airport city, why, why airport city and why Manchester? Well, let, let me just say a few things about Manchester Airport at this moment in time, and then that, that should help to explain some of the rationale for airport city. Manchester Airport, third biggest airport in the UK. It's the only airport apart from Heathrow with two runways. We do 20 million passengers per annum. The group does 25 million passengers per annum. And really only Gatwick and Heathrow do more. Uh, the af after us you have Stansted and then you go into regional airports, for example, Birmingham and Liverpool, but they're all half the size of Manchester. So Manchester's got a rich mix of airlines that operate from Manchester. They travel to Singapore, the US, all over Europe and through the major hubs in the Middle East in Doha, uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So we're, we, we do tend to attract in Manchester the premium carriers. So when you do speak to airlines, uh, they do tell you they want to come first and foremost to premium cities. They do like to capture capital cities, but I can assure you that Manchester is considered by the major airlines in the world to be a good business destination and to be a premium city. So that, that's important. So that, that whole concept of Manchester being a premium city, a really good business destination, a developing economy is important for us as an airport operator to attract uh, direct routes from the US and obviously from Asia Pacific. So moving from that base, uh, we look at the land that we actually own and obviously the land that is adjacent to the airport owned by the city of Manchester and we see great potential in airport city. Now, Airport City is a concept that's been developed, as I've said, over the last three years. We've now got detailed master plans. We have looked at the market in detail in the last two years, and we, we are absolutely 100% certain 
it's a really strong, viable commercial proposition. It will be complementary to the opportunities that exist in Manchester, many of which you've actually heard about this week. But certainly we're aiming to attract a whole range of businesses into Airport City that will range from logistics, warehousing, distribution, high-tech manufacturing, financial services, and office accommodation. Now again, you'll be aware uh, that the Chancellor in January this year actually confirmed, uh, sorry, actually last year actually confirmed that the airport city would be the focal point of the enterprise zone for Greater Manchester. And that's important. Uh, and that again has actually stimulated considerable interest in this opportunity. But if I just leave it there for two minutes, I would quite like to, to show a film on Airport City that will actually give you a good visual, visual impression of what it's all about. The only disappointment in the film is it's actually an English accent. They couldn't do a Scottish voiceover on it, <laughs> but, but nevertheless. Welcome to Airport City, an international business destination providing world-class environments in which people work, play and stay. A vibrant economic hub with connectivity at its heart, it aims to be one of the world's most accessible and leading commercial locations. Designed as an international destination in its own right, Airport City will be a place where global companies converge to locate, meet, work and expand. It will come to life during the next 15 years through the creation of over 4 million square feet of quality commercial environments that include 1.4 million square feet of logistics and warehousing, 1.5 million square feet of office space, 650,000 square feet of advanced manufacturing, 100,000 square feet of ancillary retail, and nearly 2,500 hotel beds. Here, businesses can choose from a range of plots tailored exactly to their needs, all within a wider enterprise zone that benefits from business rate discounts, simplified planning processes and super-fast broadband connections. Airport City will also offer a rich diversity of staff and visitor amenities, with coffee houses, restaurants, shops and hotels, all within a short walk. Public spaces will be safe, vibrant and attractive seven days a week ensuring the city develops a meaningful heart and soul people love to use. Away from Airport City, Manchester City Centre, Withenshaw, Orderly Edge, Nutsford and Hale are only a few minutes away. And there, you'll find some of the region's finest schools, retail, leisure and residential destinations. Integrated and sustainable transport will be part of what makes Airport City so extraordinary. Whilst linking directly to the regional motorway network, you won't have to travel by car. The public transport hub at the heart of Airport City will offer local, regional and national connections by train, bus and coach. Not forgetting the new Metrolink line opening in 2016. Walking and cycling will also be encouraged through stunning landscaping that offers engaging and efficient access across the site. Of course, Manchester Airport already provides a growing number of connections to over 200 global destinations. So, no matter how you commute, Airport City will be one of the best connected business destinations in the world. Welcome to the city of the future. Welcome to Airport City. So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you will, you will agree it is a viable proposition. This has certainly been subject to detailed scrutiny uh, within the airport group, and it meets all our requirements in terms of a serious commercial proposition. So, I mean, moving forward, uh, we, we're intending to look at the opportunity of working with one or more development partners to help us deliver this scheme over a 10 to 15 year period. And this will be one of our primary requirements over the course of the next three to six months to bring that development partner in to work with us uh, and obviously the city of Manchester. And clearly, uh, there's a great opportunity in Medi Park that Felicity will tell you about and we will be collaborating right across the zone. But we consider this to be a superb opportunity, and I hope you do as well. Now, I would just, just like to finish by saying that John Atkins and his team have done a superb job bringing Airport City to this point, and they have to be commended for all the work they've done, and it's really all down to John and his team. So if I can just hand you over to Felicity now, we'll learn about Medipark, which is an equally attractive proposition.
Thank you very much indeed, Charlie, and uh, thank you for the introduction, Sir Howard. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Medipark is uh, at the beginning of, of a very exciting journey, but uh, what it is is uh, opportunistic. Uh, never let it be said that we don't uh, piggyback always on the opportunities which Sir Howard and Manchester and all our Manchester partners have done so much uh, to create. Airport City is a fantastic opportunity. And sitting right next door to it, we thought, what more can we do with this fantastic opportunity? There really has to be something else that we can leverage in terms of the asset base that we have in Greater Manchester. I chair a hospital. Now, many of you may think of a hospital as simply a place that treats people. Well, we do that, we do it rather well. Uh, but we're actually a very large driver of the economy. We employ 5,500 people. We have a turnover in excess of 330 million pounds. But we are also a major teaching and research institute. And we are only one of four major teaching and research hospitals in Greater Manchester, in the Greater Manchester area. And not only that, we are founder members of something called the Manchester Academic Health Science Centre. Now, I suspect that few of you have ever heard of, uh, of MASC, as it's uh, sometimes referred to. But actually, MASC is a coming together of the fantastic research we have in the university, down the Oxford Road corridor, plus all of the research that goes on in our teaching and research hospitals. Uh, in order to create new treatments, to new ways of uh, developing the health market. And it is only one of five internationally accredited academic health science centers in the whole of the UK. The other four are all in what we all call the Golden Triangle. Three are in London, one in Cambridge. The only one outside the Golden Triangle is in Manchester.